My name is Luke Barbosa. I'm the owner over at HVAC Double H. Today I want to talk to you about air filters, particularly MERV rating. I know there's a lot of people out there that follow Dave, the DIY guy. Uh, dude's incredible. He puts out a ton of fantastic content. But I do want to respectfully disagree with one thing that he posted here recently uh, about air filters and MERV rating. He said that the higher the MERV rating, the more restrictive the filter is and even only went up to MERV 13. And in this video, I want to show you how I tested a MERV 8 and a MERV 16. And if you watch till the end, you'll see which one of those two filters actually had the lower pressure drop across the filter. So stay tuned, make sure you watch till the very end. And please subscribe to this channel. So what we'll cover in this video, we're gonna cover what is static pressure. We will cover how to select the best air filter as we move into 2024. And lastly, we will be performing the MERV 8 vs MERV 16 furnace filter test. What is static pressure? Uh, the best way I can describe static pressure is it's like your system's blood pressure, which everybody's heard that before. But what does that mean exactly? Well, it's a grade on your system's ductwork. The way it's designed, the way it's installed, and your overall system performance. As static pressure goes up, airflow goes down. That's a very key airflow principle. Static pressure is measured with a digital or analog manometer. There's all different ones out there. I like Testo instruments personally. Um, I've got a little Testo 510 that I use to check static with. You also need a pitot tube to check static pressure. On most systems you can look right on the nameplate and it will tell you what the maximum external static pressure is. But really don't want to get too technical into this video about static pressure. I just want to cover the, the kind of bare minimum on it so it kind of makes sense when we're talking about the pressure drop. This is the information that's going to help you determine how to select the best air filter in 2024. The first thing we're going to look at is this PSE chart. The next thing is this initial resistance. All right, so what is PSE? Particulate size efficiency. That essentially refers to the catch rate of a filter, how well it catches different size particles. Let's look at the chart on this filter as an example. This MERV-8 filter is only 21.8% effective at catching particulates between 0.3 and 1 microns. If you look at the next one, 1 to 3 microns, 61%, and so on. 3 to 10, 83%. Let's look at this in comparison to our MERV-16 filter here. Our MERV-16 filter is 95.2% effective at catching particulates or viruses between 0.3 and 1 micron and 99.9% .9 effective at catching larger particulates from 3 to 10 microns. So what is a micron? Well, a micron is 125,000 four hundredth of an inch. It's a microscopic measurement. That's what it converts to in the standard measuring system we use here in the United States. And to put these in perspective, 0.3 to 1 microns, this is going to be bacterial stuff like influenza, viruses, common cold. 1 to 3 microns, we're talking more like combustion particulates from cooking, wood-burning stoves, candles, that sort of thing fall in this range. 3 to 10 microns, we're talking more about coarse dust particles, larger pollens, dust mites, feces, all that fun stuff. 
All right, so what is the initial resistance? Let's elaborate on that some for you. And we're also gonna demonstrate exactly what that is. Initial resistance is the pressure drop across your filter. In other words, this is how restrictive your filter truly is. The higher this number is, the more restrictive your filter is. Lastly, the MERV-8 versus MERV-16 filter test. As you can see, we have a MERV-8 and MERV-16 filter here. First one we will be testing is this MERV-16. This filter is made by Healthy Climate or Linux is the manufacturer of the equipment you might be familiar with. If you notice how many pleats this has per square inch, it's a ton. Pleat is like the accordion paper inside. Also, if you noticed on the front side of it, the one side almost looks black. This filter is not dirty. It's a carbon filter, so it also helps with odors. Let's pop this panel on, drill our test holes, and get to testing this thing out. We're gonna zero out our meter here. This is a Testo 510. So this measurement's in inches of water column. First up, we have the MERV 16. And inside of the return plenum, on the right side of the filter, we're gonna round this to 0.33 inches water column. It's kind of bouncing around there, so we'll take the average there right in the middle, go across the filter, stick it in on the left side of the filter, and we've got 0.53 on this side, so pretty much right on a 0.2 pressure drop. Now what we're checking over here is the total system static pressure which we'll create another video for that. I was just curious on what kind of impact these two filters have on the total system static. But all right, let's pull out our MERV 16 and check out our MERV 8 next. Again, this filter's not dirty. That darker side there on the left is because it's a carbon filter. These are both brand new filters, fresh out of the plastic this MERV-8 was. Let's slide this guy in here, and pop this panel back on, and let's get to testing the MERV-8. After you watch this entire video, make sure to check out the link in our bio. So in the return plenum, this is on the right side of the filter, we've got 0 0.33, 0 0.34, so very, close to what the MERV-16 was. But now when we go across to the left side of the filter, we have 0 0.54, 0 0.55. So in conclusion, which one was the higher pressure drop? Let's take a look. First, we tested the MERV-16, which had a 0.19 pressure drop across it. Next, we tested the MERV-8, which had a 0.21 pressure drop across it. But as you could tell in the video, they did fluctuate between two to four hundredths of an inch of water column. So in conclusion, let's just say that these were the exact same pressure drop, giving the MERV-8 the benefit of the doubt in this situation. My point I want to drill home here is that there are two things I want you to look at before purchasing filters. And you can know this information by merely looking at the filter. And if the data is not published on the filters, you probably shouldn't buy that filter.